No, it is not an Elsa dress. We're going off brand. Remember when I said I have another version of this dress in mind? A rather dramatic version. Well, it's finally time to make it, yay! I have had altogether way too much time to think about this dress. So what was originally supposed to be just a floor length version of that first hoodie dress, like a little more dramatic, but nothing extreme. Um, now it's extreme. Plus I already did the two versions of the hoodie dress that are longer and slightly more dramatic, so. Gotta step it up, man. This project has now entered costume realm, and honestly, I'm okay with that. I am more than okay with that. I'm very excited about that, actually. You know how in like writers' rooms and businesses, I suppose, there's meetings where everybody sits around the conference table and throws ideas at each other? Well, I have those even though it's just me. They're in my head, and they're in really random places. The big pitch meeting for this dress was in the Uber, on the drive to the airport for our Christmas vacation, I was sitting there basically like this, looking likely very angry on the outside, but on the inside, I was drafting out three different possible hood constructions, you know, as you do. So having had so much time to think of it, I of course have many different elements now that I wanna get all into this one dress. I am cobbling them together. Here's my way to sketch of it. I've been learning Procreate. It's been going swimmingly. <laughs> the base of this is, of course, my one and only oh so favorite pattern. But let's very quickly go through all of the alterations that I plan on making because there are a lot of them. In fact, I'm still lightly debating whether this is going to be one dress or a two piece thing where, like, one part is the dress and the other part is a capey hood cloak sort of thing. Either way though, I am planning to incorporate the exact same things. So starting from the bottom, first thing up, train. Just a small one, but you know, it's a queen dress. You gotta have the privilege of dragging your skirt behind you. While a helicopter goes over, let me take a moment to acknowledge the adorableness that is acorn mug. Mm. Y'all, it's so cute. And this is one of the places at Disney that I worked. So we popped back in to like look at it. <laughs> I don't know, I like to do that when I'm there. And I saw these mugs and I was like, a must. Okay, the helicopter's gone. Go days. Anytime I want the skirt on this pattern to be big and swooshy, I add go days. Pockets, obviously. Just regular side seam pockets should be fine on this one. I thought about going like more dramatic with the pockets, but there's enough other stuff going on. A belt, maybe? I'm really not sure about this one. Lacing in the back. This is a first for this pattern and I'm really excited to try it. I keep pointing over here. Am I gonna put my drawing up on the screen for this long? Cause that drawing is a mess. Long, slim fit sleeves with pointy tips. <laughs> that just feels very Snow Queeny to me. The sleeves that like come down and uh, have like the triangle that goes over your hand. I don't know, it just, it just feels right. Arm capes. I tried to explain this concept to Matt and um, this is what I ended up having to call them for him to get what I was talking about. Basically it's an over sleeve that's going to split at the shoulder and fall open and hopefully reach all the way to like the ground, cause drama. And then maybe I'll incorporate some way to like tie it or lace it closed sometimes so that then it just kind of falls from the, 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 the. what are you called? The wrist. And finally, the hood. Big, floppy, floopy, pointed, and long, and possibly pleated hood. Hood. Very into hoods right now. I have, I believe, 10 yards of white stretch velvet that I got at, you guessed it, remainders. At this point, I am honestly concerned that this will not be enough fabric, but also like, this weighs a pretty solid amount, so do I want to add more fabric to this? Probably not. And then I have also picked up a few other trimmy bits. I've got some faux fur trim, kind of thinking about putting this around the edge of the hood, 
maybe around, I don't know, the bottom of the sleeves. I also got pom-poms. And then I also got a couple different like buttonhole trim options and some cord trim. I don't know. This is for the lacing in the back. So that is that. Shall we go do the thing? Since I don't know exactly how much fabric I have or will need or what that relation is, I'm gonna start cutting out the most necessary pieces of this gown and keep adding all those extra elements until I run out of fabric or run out of elements, whichever comes first. I started this process by wisely rethinking my Godet plan. Let's listen in on my musings. No side seam Godets. They already make it hard to put in the pockets, so let's just skip it, save some fabric. Might not do front Godets either but definitely back godets. Flatter in the front, fuller in the back, but I might still put some in the front if I have enough fabric. But this is a good way to save on fabric, so. Solid choices. Cool. Starting with the most necessary piece of all, the front center panel, I measured how long I want it to be because this dress is not actually floor length on me by the pattern. So I'll be adding an extra seven inches onto the hem in the front. That's probably a bit overboard, but y'all know how much I like to go overboard. My go-to trick on this pattern is also to taper the sides of each panel outward an extra inch or two, just to get a bit more natural width to the hem. You gotta grab every bit of swoosh you can get. I was about to move on to the second most important thing, the side front panels, when I remembered nap. Not taking a nap, though that would be great, but the direction the fuzzy of this fabric goes, meaning it all needs to be cut out in the same direction. So I moved on to the sleeves since they will fit in this chunk of fabric that I have left, and those I just have to extend a bit and then add that point onto, nothing too difficult. I did think that a normal hemline on that pointed sleeve end might look a bit weird though, so I cut out what I would call a sleeve facing. I'm not sure it'll work, but it's a small piece of fabric, so no worries if it doesn't. Now I can move on to those side front panels. Bit of a taper where I can get it, seven extra inches onto the hem, Bob's your uncle. Always the next most important thing after the side front panels is the pockets, cause I just trace the shape of those panels starting about 10 inches down from the top of the side seam. Easy peasy, lemons are being squeezied. Onto the back center panel, and this one is actually getting quite a bit of adjustment. First of all, I don't want the lacing in the back to just be ornamental. I want it to actually have something to cinch in. So I'm going to lightly expand the entire piece, starting at the point where the side panels attach. I've also got the train on this piece, and since I was already already lengthening the whole skirt seven inches, I decided a solid 18 inches on this back part would give me enough of skirt dragging. I'm prioritizing the hood next cause it should fit in this chunk of fabric. And oh my goodness, this was the most winging it that winging it could possibly be. Cause I didn't even mark out any guidelines. I just started cutting. I guess I really should do that tutorial on hoods eventually cause um, I don't think I have time in this video to fully explain my reasoning here. Someone mentioned in the comments previously concerning lining the hood on my blue hoodie dress that it's not a good idea to line it with the stretch velvet as that will actually get like caught in your hair. Great tip, thank you for that. So I pulled some other white fabric from my stash and did hair slippage tests and yeah, I think this satiny stuff will do nicely. I'm not sure if non-stretch lining on a stretch material will bite me in the butt, but you know what? I'm sure it'll be fine. The side back panels and then those back godets both needed to taper from the original seven inches longer than normal to the 18 inches longer than normal. But other than that, they were pretty normal kiddos. We are almost out of fabric now and my remaining pieces are all technically optional. Arm capes, front godets, and belt. I sincerely hope that's all I have left at least. I have somewhat lost track. My priority out of those three is the arm capes, of course, because the belt I can probably get from my scraps if I want. And honestly, I think the shape of the gown will be really cool if it's flatter in the front and fuller in the back. So I can do without those front godets. Also, somewhere along the process of cutting this out, I kind of decided it's going to be just one gown, I guess. Maybe, probably. So arm capes. Um, I thought these would just be like a simple extension of the sleeve pattern, but then I remembered that I want the opening in the front with no visible seam and yeah, I'm super hungry. So my brain no work right now. It's time for a lunch break. As often is the case, sandwich make brain work better. Ish. So back at it, I slowly figured out how to switch the sleeve pattern around so that the dips for the underarm are in the center with the peak of the shoulder and the dart on the outside. Theoretically, I can just sew what normally would be the dart closed and then just hem those outside edges, which will fall open, revealing the arm underneath. Dramatically. 
That's the hope at least. Um, I'm super duper unsure on this one. So we shall see. And I'll cut out the belt later because I really wanted to get started on construction. Okay. That was a lot of cutting out. <laughs> Hello. Why are you not plugged in, sir? Hey, look, I found a pen. <laughs> so as far as putting this dress together, theoretically it shouldn't be any more difficult than normal, right? <laughs> Normally, I always start this dress with the front side, I think just so that I can get those pockets in and good to go. But I think I'm gonna start with the back. I wanna do that lacing. I think either of these would work. I just got two because one of them is kind of a brighter, shinier white than the other. And this is such a bright, shiny white. I feel like it matches to the fabric better. Well, actually, hmm, hmm. Dang it, you were supposed to make my choice easier. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah, no. No, yeah. This one is better. So yeah, this is a really easy way to add lacing to anything like this. Like if you wanted to take this pattern and add side lacing, you could do this exact same thing because you already have seams right there. So you just have to get some sort of trim with loops or make your own loops. I had a whole video talking about this and you just sew it into that seam when you sew the seams together. I'm gonna base it down first, but you know. So now I can add the godets. It's very important to add the right one to the right side. Oh y'all, this is gonna be very interesting to sew on. I feel like the blue dress, the velvet on that was not as sticky. It's almost like Velcro-y with this. So when you stick two right sides together, like one minute they're sticking to each other and the next minute they're sliding. I don't know, the blue one, I didn't really have trouble with that. Y'all, it just occurred to me that this dress and then the black dress from this same pattern could be like the angel and the devil on your shoulder. <laughs> anyway, random thought. And there's our tiny lacing loops. Get in places. Okay, so a couple things. First of all, I look like I'm getting married. Um, it's incredibly see-through. I don't know why I didn't fully expect that and prepare for that, but um, yeah, it's see-through. Also, the lacing on the back. I did not think through how tiny these lacing loops are and therefore how much of it there is. I think it looks kind of cool, but oh my goodness, that took forever to lace everything in there and it's gonna be a whole thing to adjust it every single time. So that's fun. People ask me all the time, like for tips for sewing with knit and everybody acts like it's really hard. And honestly, you guys, I've never had that much trouble with it until today. This one <laughs> has not been fun to sew on. This is the first time that I've really experienced the seams stretching the fabric out and I'm doing everything I can that I normally do to stop that from happening, like feeding it through very carefully, making sure there's no pressure. But I think it's the fibers pushing against each other. It's, it's like a really soft Velcro and it's like one piece of fabric is literally just shoving the other one down and there seems to be nothing I can do about it. So yeah, this is turning out to be lightly more frustrating than I thought it would be. I did just have a random thought though, cause I was thinking I'm gonna have to either dig through my stash or go to Joanne or Remainders and just find a white stretch material still, but like a much more stable one. And then basically make an entire underdress. It doesn't have to be as long. It can just kind of be mid thigh. But then I remembered this dress from the pile of clothing that I'm supposed to upcycle in a video soon. It is the same pattern. It's white. Can I recycle this dress into the lining for this dress? Let's find out. So this is definitely a way more stable knit. It's much less stretchy. It is thicker all around. Obviously I wouldn't need the sleeves or the binding, but I could basically sew that one on and just cut off all the extra stuff, right? I think it'll work. It's not see-through anymore. And that was basically all I needed. But it also, I think with this sewn onto the lower layer, 
will provide much more stability here on top. <sighs> that is delightful. That saves me from having to go buy fabric. It recycles something that I basically wasn't gonna use. Perfect! It's late and I am tired of this dress. <laughs> But this gives me a good place to start tomorrow. It's so good when you find the solution before starting your next round of working on something. So like you know what you're coming back to and you know it's okay and a good thing. Always so handy. I'm really hungry. I'm gonna go eat dinner. Bye! morning I got started on attaching the outer dress to the inner one, with immediate levels of chaos, including but not limited, to drinking coffee over my white fabric, realizing the outer dress was bigger than the inner one and adjusting the seams rather haphazardly, and lots of making this face. Okay, y'all, I am feeling so much better about this now. I mean, one, it's not see-through. Bless you! Oh, squishes. How oh, wow. Um, but also, it just feels like way more stable, namely because it has sleeves. I am now considering what I want to do to the hem, because it's all just a little more drapey than I imagined it being. But I'm also tempted to like maybe add fur around the bottom of it or even put like horse hair on the inside so that it has like some structure. I don't know. But right now I need to move on to those sleeves. We're gonna find out if the arm capes work. I don't know. <laughs> um, the inner ones went pretty okay. Lots of futzing around and adjusting the size, but the pointy bit with my sleeve facing went pretty well, and I think those will look nice. Then I moved on to the arm capes, and, <laughs> well, it went so poorly I just didn't film it. It's official. I hate this fabric. With a burning, fiery hatred. <sighs> uh, y'all. I have worked with so many different types of knit before. I have worked with a stretch velvet before and I have never, ever had this much trouble. On top of everything that I already complained about, <laughs> you also like can't iron it. I mean, you can, but it's risky. The back of the dress has an iron print on it now. So whoops about that. <laughs> and also seam ripping is just the devil. <laughs> you can't see the threads on it in the first place. And then if you like do the proper official way you're, I know this is tiny, but you can do like the proper seam ripping. I've learned how to do that. Where you use this on the bottom and you, ch -ch 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 -ch. you know what I'm talking about. You do that, you're gonna make holes in it. So yeah, I'm having a blast. <laughs> Actually, the, the shape of the arm capes turned out perfectly fine. I was a little confused by it at first, but it was actually okay. You know, it's basically like that. It was finishing this edge that's a problem. Basically just hemming it, which gives me so much confidence for the future hemming, like the entire hem that I'm gonna have to do on this dress. But yeah, I started hemming the edge. It looked atrocious. So then I seam ripped it out and managed to make several teeny tiny little holes. So now I'm wondering what if I got some fur trim and finished the edges like that. So I think I could put this along the bottom of the arm capes and that was already kind of what my plan was, but I think this would be too wide to try to finish the entire slit edges with. So if I could get something thinner, maybe? What I'm kind of coming to realize is that the best way to sew on this fabric is to have it not touch the sewing machine. You need something in between the fabric and the sewing machine. Like sewing the lining dress on was the best experience so far using this fabric because the stuff that was touching my sewing machine was that stabler lining knit. So like the outer stuff didn't really stretch out or do any of the things that it's been doing for me. Trying to do like your normal double fold hem and then sew it, it's not working. Not working at all. I don't know. We will make it work. I am a quitter sometimes, but not on this one. I'm gonna make it work. How much of this do I have left? I mean, you could just close that up further. Try stuff. Now I'm just muttering to myself. So in a bout of absolutely great timing, someone suggested to me that I should check out 
JP's Tex and Trim, which is down in like the LA Fashion District yesterday, which was perfect timing, not only because I needed to go look for new trim, but also because I already had to drive down to that area to pick up my pottery. Y'all, I tried pottery. Hello. Right after I said that I wanted to try pottery, I was texting a friend like, oh, we should get together. And she was like, so actually, how about we go to a pottery class together? Like totally independent, hadn't mentioned anything to her. So that worked out well. Here is the bowl I made. I'm quite pleased with it. And here is a bowl that the teacher made, which she gifted to me because we made two bowls. But my first one <laughs> was really, really weak. And then my bat got like kind of stuck to the wheel. So when I went to lift it off, I went Ugh! and the whole thing went yeah. And she was like, we can't fire that. It will crack and fall apart. So my first attempt, complete failure. Second attempt, quite cute. I am very grateful that pottery requires quite a bit of stuff because that means I can't just run out and buy the supplies and pick up another hobby. I really, really enjoyed it. I do not have space for a pottery studio, but I will probably go back and take some more classes. Anyway, my point being, that was right down the street from this fabric place that somebody had suggested. So I popped over in there. It was interesting, but suffice it to say that this store was absolutely packed with trim of seemingly every kind. It was quite overwhelming and a little bit scary. And I tried my best to look through all of it and there was no white fur trim. So that was a total bust, but still, thanks for the suggestion, thou who suggested it. So I went to Joanne and they had some white faux fur trim. This was the only one that had a decent amount of one kind. As a backup, I got some of this kind of like whitish clear ribbon. So if there is not enough of this, that's my backup plan. Oh, and also I bought a whale basket. <laughs> Cause it's a whale and a basket. Joanne got me y'all. So how long exactly is the arm cape? I don't want a math. 204, that's 17 feet, which is 5.6 yards. So theoretically, I do have enough of that. I started by putting my wide strip of fur along the bottom outside hem, just top stitching it down essentially. And then I cut a strip of the satin hood lining fabric to cover the back of that fur because I don't like how it looks. In retrospect, I think it might've looked better to just put the strip of fur on the inside of the arm cape hem as that's what you see a lot more of than the outside, but oh well, too late. Then I sewed the thin strip of fur, which I have exactly the right amount of, not an inch to spare, on the inside edge of that split. This was the best way I could come up with to have clean edges and not see the back of the fur or anything. And yeah, I think it works as well as anything on this dress is gonna work quite frankly. Then I could base the arm cape onto the inner sleeve so they won't slide around and finally stitch the sleeve onto the dress, chopping off the lining sleeve as I went. I then pinned the hood onto the neckline, adding two pleats on each side so that it would be the proper size. Never have to measure if you pleat or gather. Once that was sewn on, I MacGyvered a chopstick with a needle on the end to get the lining in the outer points of the hood lined up and then like sew a pom-pom on there. And y'all, clearly this is the most fun I've had making this entire dress. I am liking this so much more now. It's actually really comfy too. There's just a few things left to fix. I don't like the height right here. So I'm just gonna taper this down so that it sits a little better here on front. And then I just need to finish up that inside edge. Then it's the hem, which I think I'm going to use the ribbon like I was maybe gonna do on here. It really just makes a huge difference sewing something non-stretch onto this fabric instead of the fabric to itself. Or potentially some horse hair, cause I do have some horse hair and that would make it stand out a little better. And then I think I will try to make a belt for it, a belty sash thing, but I'm not gonna film any of the rest of this. We have seen me struggle with this fabric long enough. So let's go to that final product. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
Hi. Yo, he loves these pom-poms. I think they're just the perfect size for his little snoot. That one's attached. Munch, munch, munch. Oh, baby. This Snow Queen only has red boots and they hurt. On the other hand, the dress is very, very comfortable. Although note to self or possibly anyone, when you make a dress with a train on it, it's probably a good idea to have a partner for your photo shoot. I like film and photograph myself by myself usually for these final products. It's very rare that Matt is home and can help me, but this would have been a good one to uh, wait for him to get home because there's no one to fix your train and trying to fix it yourself is hard. I would love to take photos of this in the snow one day, but um, I would have to drive several hours before I would possibly hit snow. I'm assuming at least like six to eight, if not more. It is a heavy dress, which I feel like is something I make a lot. People are always asking like, oh my goodness, how heavy is whatever gown you just made? Hi, Trotty Paws. Did you go looking for your pom-pom? And they do tend to weigh quite a bit, but I think I really like that. It's almost like I've never had a weighted blanket, but I assume it's kind of the feeling of a weighted blanket. Like I enjoy wearing a dress that is heavy. It feels very like, who secure, stately. I don't know. I really like the feeling of a heavy dress. So I've never mind that. You're so needy right now. I did end up getting myself more of the fur trim and doing horsehair on the hem. So there's horsehair on the inside and then the fur trim on the outside. And that did make the hem stand out a lot more. Yeah, I mean, ultimately I don't really have any critiques of it other than like, I don't think I will be working with stretch velvet or fur for quite a while, if not like forever. <laughs> Way too problematic. I really enjoy the feeling of this. It's very delightful to me, but yeah, I'm gonna... <laughs> Not again, I can be done with that. I do like how this dress and the black dress are sort of direct opposites in more ways than one. Like, yeah, one is all black, one is all white. That one's kind of revealing. This one's very covering. But also I started the black dress in kind of a funk in a weird place. And the process of making it brought me so much joy and made me so happy. And this one, I started like, yes, rare and to go. So excited about this dress. And the process of making it just like pfft, collapsed my mood. I was so annoyed with it up until the very end. I love it now. I'm glad that I stuck with it and didn't quit, but whoo, it just, it challenged me more than I expected it to. And I think that's ultimately what got me is that I had pictured this dress in my head for a really long time and I had not pictured it being this challenging to construct. Come to your projects with an open mind, I think is the lesson here. And then maybe you won't get grumpy five minutes in when it proves to be more difficult than you expected. Oh, there's salt on my face. Acrylic paint and salt, y'all, cause I really didn't have any white makeup. So this worked. Oh, my nose is starting to run. It's not even cold outside. It was actually a ridiculously warm day to be filming in this. Of course it was. Okay, bye. Let me just, oh. Uh, where's the sleeve? Didn't I have a finished sleeve somewhere? Oh Lord. Let's not talk about that. Uh, um, exciting stuff.